Good day and welcome back to the channel folks. We sit inside one of the unusual only right hand drive cars or one of the very few right hand drive cars in the game. It's of Japanese origin and it's one of those cars that comes free with the first game when you bought it. I say you had to buy the upgrade pack and it got you that uh, this additional car. It is the Tom's Castrol Supra. It is an absolute animal even even toned down like it's going to be today but it's an absolute beauty it's one to marvel at it's a legend in the game and it is available in the legend cars when it comes around if you don't own it let's go take a look at the setup settings for today's on racing softs we've got a pp of 78349 against the target of 800 fully customizable suspension as default i've not changed anything the differential gear is as it is 10 30 20. the downforce 400 on the front and we are 650 not all the way to the rear ecu is 100 transmission is the normal one we haven't put anything extra in we can't adjust it that's where it is medium rpm turbocharger nothing else added we got the brake controller set all the way to the front nothing else added we could probably put in a little bit if there is there we could probably take the gearbox and increase it but i don't think there's any point we've got a we've 78349 we're well inside the target and if you want to go and do that please feel free here we are at the track it's the world touring car 800 it's a 15 lap race we've got a full field of gr3s total prize of 485 if at 485,000 if you're going to win the race we're going to help to claim the 50% uh, bonus on that which takes it to almost 800k let's take a look at the settings and assist trash control one default ABS we're going to use the ASM and the counter steer on strong controller settings controller sensitivity 5 force feedback max torque 5 force feedback sensitivity 6 I know you watch this all the time and you see that all the time but that's for the new guys the guys that don't see it so let's get straight into the race don't think we need to change the fuel map but we'll just change it down to have a look it's a fairly decent car fuel looks pretty sus at 3.1 as we come across the line but let's see where we go dive in and give Mr. Wilk a tap on the inside outside front corner Mr. Solace is running quite strong fuel's coming back back end quite twitchy all the lights are flashing we're now going to tweak that down to 4.2 Sorry, we're going to tweak that down to fuel map 2. I said 4.2, I don't know why. We need to probably go back to fuel map 3. We haven't got room to get past these boys. There we go, there's fuel map 3. Charging up the hill, braking on the 150. Bracken's quite tweaky, even with these soft tyres. We want to get in. want to do five lap stints so we want a two stopper see if we can slide past Mr. Cookabun Mr. Gallo gives Mr. McEwen a little love tap on the rear we're going to go up the outside see if we can make it round with four points of fuel left four laps of fuel currently on 4.1 on fuel map 3 looks like we're going to be good to the pit stop a 141.325 as we just run out of gear coming up there now this is a GT500 car officially which which should be the equivalent of GP, GT3 from the Japanese market although some cars in this race are GT300 it's kind of there or thereabouts there are a couple of other cars we could use in the GT500 uh, series we do anticipate taking the Skyline and the Silhouette. They would be decent cars to bring here, but most of these cars are going to be doing a two-stop at this point. Got to find another couple of one-stoppers just to mix it up. 
and maybe something special to finish off. We'll have to see what we can find. 150 is my braking marker there as we make it into seventh place. Mr. Portilla leads us out. He's some 13.3 seconds in the lead. Mr. Grady just checks up there just a little bit aggressively. Okay, we've got Mr. Yamanaka slowing down early. See if we could on fuel. Bit of a short shift there just to try and conserve a little bit. Good on fuel, fuel map 3 seems to be about right. There's a 137, we've missed the braking point. Just saved it. Got a break at the 150 and I'm, my eyes are jumping around all over the place to try and pick up on the events as we go round and I'm making all sorts of mistakes. Just trying to do so much with driving, commentating, not particularly concentrating on what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm thinking about the words and sometimes it just becomes all a little bit too much for my little brain. As we give Mr. Ordinez the, uh, the outside line to run into the wall and he chose not to. So Fraga and Beauvoir in their own little battle. and uh, just go flashing past them rather than join their fight. Fraga made his way past quite cleanly there, didn't he? Left the door open for us after him. Mr. Portel has made a bit of a dash for it, some 9.5 seconds in the lead. We're going to do two more laps if uh, Mr. Portilla is on track for his strategy. He'll be pitting at the end of this current lap, so... Mr. Fraga tries to dive bomb me down the inside. He takes that apex. There you go, that's what happens when you take the late entry line. Somebody comes and fills the hole, which is never good. He's gonna, he's gonna shove us wide, he did. He actually shoved us wide. He kept his foot in. Well, that's that's a bit of challenging racing from Mr. Praga. He likes to, uh, we don't mind, we'll fight our way back. Then we will get our opportunity to uh, maybe introduce him to a little bit of sheet steel or I don't know. Maybe the grassy knoll will come to play and we would see if we can uh, show Mr. Fraga a thing or two. He's actually got his toe right down. Is he on for a pit? Along with Mr. Portilla, is he pushing, pushing, pushing? He's kept us behind him all the way round. Dive bombed us once, pushed us off twice. He's carrying on, so we use his draft, we'll get past him. Mr. Fra Mr. Portilla has gone to the pits as anticipated. I say that every time we race this race, don't I? I'm gonna leave that door open again if he wants to take it, and he came up the inside, but he knew he was out of order last time, he really did. Back tyres are looking kind of okay. They're going to make the last lap. Fastest lap of the race is ours, 137.074. It's a shame we're six tenths up and we're not going to be able to complete this lap. This is our in lap, so there's a potential 136 on here. If we can continue with that 0.6 for the rest of the lap. We have 
around that corner there. We got stuck between flashy gears and it just wasn't happening. Picked up some damage on the right hand side there. And we've just got the right amount of fuel to get us to the pits, I think. I don't think we'll run out as we dive in. There we go. Taking the soft tyres. And we're going to take all the fuel. Still got the damage on the front. I wonder if the pit crew are going to have to uh, give us assistance with that. Camera crew are ready watching. Tyres go on. Another set of slicks. Fraga's come in. Ordinez has come in. And Yamanaka looking for Portillaries in seventh place. Is he going to come through and take the lead? Or will it be Lopez who comes through? No, Portilla. Portilla looks like he's going to come through. There he goes. That was close. So this is where we get to match our pace against Portilla and see if, see if we've got a chance here. Fuel is going to be tight, so I'm just going to play on that and attempt to recover a little bit whilst we uh, follow Mr. Portilla around see if we can just manage to conserve a little bit by coast and roll that apex there didn't he lose the grass in all to our advantage there far enough ahead of Mr. Portilla there to block his approach to the apex I did give him the opportunity to take it but he was probably way too far back so we just run a little wide there as we pulse the throttle going between those two corners just 0.284 up which we probably did lose half a second or so between those two corners by running the wider line. Again, a driver error, not the car. Let's see if we can get this corner clean up here. Grassing old tends to sit in our way a little bit. We fluffed it up already. We didn't actually run the, the grass in all. We actually avoided it. Got the line all wrong into there. We're doing that quite a bit. We're making inroads. Now the question is, are you going to be like me and you already own these cars? Or are these cars going to be a challenge for you to purchase because you're going to have to wait for them to come round in the uh, in the legend shop? Now I was fortunate enough to get this car when I purchased the game. It was free if you pre-ordered and you bought a specific level of the game. And I know it didn't come into the legend shop for a good six months. A lot of people were asking where it was. And why it wasn't in the game? Well, it was. It was just, it was a free gift. 0.439 up then, I believe that was. 
four seconds in the lead. I think Mr. Paul Tiller is going to be pitting the end of this lap, maybe. We hit that inside apex and pushed the back end of the car out, which caused it to spin up. We lost over a quarter of a second because of that mistake. Mistake after mistake for this driver. Hot and tired. Doesn't matter to you guys though, you're not seeking perfection. This is grinding. Compared to the 917 living legend, this car is quite uh, forgiving as Portilla goes to the pits. This is lap 9 for us. We have got. One more lap after this one. Let's see if we didn't get the fastest lap of the race that time round. We actually lost that time as we went round. Farga assumes second place in the race now. Portilla, Miazano, Mendoza go to the pits all together. We probably lost that one tenth that we are up this point see if we can make a wide entry stick and work there there we go 12 seconds in the lead so we're not pitting this lap we're pitting the next lap So we're going to pit the next lap, we've got the fuel we need, with 13.3 seconds ahead, breaking on the 150. That's about now, and this final pit stop where we start to increase our lead. Mr. Fortilla, although he's trailing back there, he's going to come back to the four very shortly because we're all going to pit, he pitted last lap round. And then it's going to be between us and Portilla. He wasn't that far behind us when we pitted. Now there's that time up again. And we've done it again on the in-lap. So this car performs much better on a lower fuel weight. Mr. Hizal goes to the pits. Doesn't feature very heavily in this race, Mr. Hizal. Still a great competitor. One I've never had significant issues with as an AI. He's always been perfectly pleasant and gentlemanly, which you kind of expect from a German sort of competitor. Normally, every time you meet a German in the game, really pleasant, really nice, really quite gentlemanly. And he does his, exude those characteristics as an AI, unlike Mr. Gallo, but he won't be mentioned. Okay, off to the pits we go for the lap 10. This is our final stop in. Look at that mass of cars going up there. We'll take the softies, we'll take all the fuel. And then we've got four Japanese guys coming past us very, very quickly, one would expect. We expect to drop down the field. Whether Fraga actually comes in, whether Ordinez comes in, I expect one of them to go through. Maybe it will just be Portilla who goes past. That's the tyres done. Let's get the fuel in. As he takes one of the last swigs on his coke. Somebody has... Frog has gone to the pit, so everybody else is behind us. Eighteen second lead. Ordinez goes to the pits. Yamanaka goes to the pits. Where is Portilla then? 
16.9 seconds. Fraga comes out the pits before Portilla. Our last in lap was some almost two seconds quicker than the prior one, which is pretty decent, one would suggest. Fastest lap we haven't been able to pick up on and dominate the 137.074. It would have been nice to be able to bring the lap time down on this, but if it can still be a 25 minute car, it's a decent one. It gives us five minutes to do the old what we need to do between the races. I'm actually in need of a new drink this time round. And I know some of you will be tracking the money and saying, hey, why is your bank balance the way it is? Well, I actually got the two million for the uh, time trial at, Le Mans, at uh, Monza today. So that added to the bank balance, but I've also spent in the region of three million on uh, various car upgrades and parts so it's quite a painful process if you're not doing a mass amount of grinding but we still anticipate building that bank balance and getting it up there as we come past the lapped car of Mr Innerstroza feels like we were faster than when we were in the 917 which I don't think so 19 seconds ahead of Fraga Three laps to go as we run it off into the gravel just to keep things interesting driver error not the car as we talk about trying to set fastest laps and be quicker I make the mistakes but we're grinding we're quick enough it doesn't matter that's what the whole thing's about it's about easy money, cash in the bank. That's what makes these cars so good. I don't just dig up old ropey bangers and barn finds and say, try one of these. There's some cars I've tried, folks, that you just won't bring out. The, uh, the roof is absolutely horrendous, the Porsche. The Porsche GT is just terrible on fuel. There's a couple of other Porsches as well that just absolute donkey do. They're no good for this race. You're only going to get two, two and a half laps and you have to really turn it down to fuel map six to get to the fifth lap to two stop and it's really not friendly. It really won't make for a, a great race. So we're digging out the best ones for you. 22 seconds in the lead as we go across the line as we pass the back markers again. Mr. Solace and Mr. Wilk put behind us. The ABS just cuts in fractionally as we make our way through the left and the right corners there. It might be the fastest lap. Mr. Portilla goes to the pits. There's 0.376 up. It might be the opportunity to do the last lap of the race to get the fastest lap in with the lowest amount of fuel in the tank. We'll have to see Mr. Portilla's out then in third place. He's still pushing for the win, that guy. It's going to have to be second, though, if he's going to get anywhere near anything because he's got a long way to catch us. same difference let's see if we can just make this the fastest lap of the race so far twenty seven seconds in the lead 136.327 that's that takes it for now so lapping up to 16th place almost come on Mr McEwen like to give me a bump and ride don't you
20 seconds in the lead. Mr. Fraga managing to maintain second place. There must be a right battle going on back there. I can't actually see where it is on the on the map. We had a bit of a slide there. Lap 14. We're getting lighter on the fuel. See if we can place our feet correctly without making mistakes. Here we go. I wonder if just fuel map 2 might do to get us the fastest lap, maybe a 35. We've still got that 31 second lead, which is pretty epic, really. That's pretty decent. Considering the living legend only had 46. Ah, oh, he might have been over a minute, actually. But I anticipate this being a 25 minute race. Which makes it faster than the Tokyo 600 cars. we're on the last lap I'm just going to give you my rundown I think this is pretty decent it's a fast car it's pretty controllable it's a little bit loose it could probably do with a little bit of tuning on the setup maybe 555 on the diff might help a bit of the old Subaru sponsor This looks like we could have another potential fastest lap of the race. 0.2 on the fuel, which should be enough to take us to the finish line. As somebody goes to the pits, and we're going to chase this car down to come across the line and to win the race. There it is. What did we get? Did we get a 135 finish? Tom's Gastrol Super. Absolute beaut of a car. One to bring to the track if you own it. A 25-31, pretty decent. And a 135-463. That's going to be a close contender at the end of the race. Mr. Fraga there gets in 37 seconds behind us. Where did we lap to? Up to 11th place. And that was pretty representative of the 917. So a pretty decent race. Where do you think you'll be, folks? There we go. The full value takes us to 9.5 million. Where did we start? 3.8 million some three days ago. We aren't doing so bad, are we, some, as we rack up these millions. 157 miles for the day. And there she is. It's up to you what you want to do, folks. If you want to take this one to the track, if you own it, do so. We'll see you on the next one. All the best. Take care.